Good morning. Good morning. In this sacred moment, we look for God and find the promise of hope, the steadfast love, and new beginnings. And let's begin by singing We Gather Together, which is hymn number 131. with praise and thanksgiving. Let us praise God. Let us pray. Great God of comfort and healing, we come today with many questions. How will we survive the challenges of this day? Can we get through our moments of loss and grief? Will we be comforted when our tears flow like many streams? In the midst of our questions, we hear voices of assurance and comfort. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. With the Lord there is steadfast love. The Spirit of God dwells in you. You will see the glory of God. May these voices remind us of your abiding presence and your steadfast love. Thank you for walking with us throughout our days. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. <clears throat> And this morning I'd like to continue with Paul's letter to the Romans. This is chapter 8, verses 6 through 11. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies, your mortal bodies, because of his spirit who lives in you. <clears throat> now it's time for this morning's welcome and announcements. So we will turn to the calendar, I think. It's just the big one. So next next Sunday is Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. And Thursday at the Chittenden United Methodist Church there will be a Monday, Thursday service at 5 p.m. If anyone is interested in making that trip, it's a 50-minute ride, but of course it will be dark on your way home probably. And 
That is all I have. Are there any other announcements for Joyce this morning anyone would like to share? No? Quiet. Friend. All right, so changing things up a little, I invite you to turn to the responsive psalm, psalm number 130, on page 848. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark equities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness for you, that you may be worshipped. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, in the Lord's word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord is plenteous redemption. And, and the Lord will be in Israel from all wickedness. So I'd like to repeat just a small two sentences in that. <clears throat> with all my heart, I wait for the Lord to help me. I put my hope in his word. I wait for the Lord to help me. I want his help more than night watchmen want the morning to come. I'll say it again. I want his help more than night watchmen want the morning to come. How do you feel today? I wonder after spending a week praying and thanking God for your help and praying for others who are sick, how do you feel? Today we begin by praying to thank God for our help. We also pray for those who are sick. Today, I wonder if you have planted a seed in the ground yet this spring. Maybe someone in your home other than you is the gardener. If you have planted any seed, you know that an important part of planting is waiting patiently for the seed to grow. You put a small, dry seedling into the soil, water it, and then you wait, and wait, and wait some more. You continue to water it, and you keep waiting. It seems like such a long time where you cannot see anything happening. Each day you water and wait, but you don't see anything sprouting. Until one day, you see what you have been waiting for, a tiny green plant peeking up through the soil. People who believe in God wait for God's promises. They wait for a day when sick people will be healed. They wait for a day when hungry people are fed. They wait for a day when enemies stop fighting and become friends. They wait for a day when the complaining stops. Sometimes it is very difficult to wait for these things. But while we wait, we do what we can to make this world a better place. A place where we know that God is working, even if we cannot see it. Sometimes it's hard waiting on God's time. But God's timing is always perfect. While we wait, we can help God's mercy and love take root by being active in planting and caring for those seeds that are mentioned. I wonder what we can do to help the seeds while we are waiting. We could water the soil. We could make sure the seeds are in proper sunlight. Shelter provides safety for us. Houses or apartments keep us warm when it's cold outside, dry when it's wet, and even cool when it's very hot during the summer months. Have you ever wondered about people who have no home to live in? Today, let us pray thanking God for shelter. Pray for those who have no place to sleep at night. We also pray for waiting. We all have been waiting for Holy Week to arrive, and now it's almost here. Do you know what that means? That means we are getting close to Easter. Let us pray. <clears throat> Faithful and loving God, help us to trust in you while we wait, giving thanks to you for Jesus and for the many ways we can gather and worship you. Help us to show others what we hope for by the way we love and care for them. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. <clears throat> So I invite you now to turn to hymn number 707 for the singing of Hymn of Praise.
this is a new one for us, I think, but it's, it's a beautiful name. <coughs> children during the tornado that hit down south. They got into their bathtub and they were saved. Yes, by the grace of God, thank you. And pray for everyone that was affected by that tornado. I hope Ray Douglas's open heart surgery goes well. They've got much better at that. Are there any others this morning? There is an update of George in your bulletin. Some good news. Long overdue, it says in the first sentence. <clears throat> so I invite you to keep the following. Danny and Bonnie, Judy, David, John and Marie, Rick and Dean, Dick, Audrey and Bessie, Jenny, Rosemarie, Billy, Pastor John and Rachel, Stephanie and Ella, Logan, Donnie, George and Pam, Paisley and family, Kyle and family, Parker, John, Teresa, Kim, Brent, Joe, Ted, Kim, Natalie and George, Kevin, Robert, Beth, Chi Chi, Brad, Linda, Tina, Josh, Nathan, Steve, Russ, Paul, Lord. 
Maury, Ian, Sarah, Carly, David and Terry, Lisa, Richard, Gerald, Melissa, Joyce, Ken, Suzette, Brenda, Deb, Douglas, the people affected by the tornado, all students and teachers, the Congregation of St. James, all of our elected officials, all of our young people, all of the citizens of the world. And as we do when there's no communion, I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And if you join me in responsive passing with the peace. The Spirit of Christ dwells in you. And also in you. Let us share the peace and love of Christ with one another by singing the hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See, which is hymn number 454. <coughs> Forget that your Holy Spirit 
dwells within us. Help us see your love and your presence in our lives. Help us trust you no matter what life may bring, and help us follow you faithfully. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Holy One, may we hear your word today. May we feel your breath of life in our bones. And may we open ourselves to the new life that only you can bring. Amen. And we're going to begin this morning by reading from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The story of the valley of the dry bones. <clears throat> the hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Come, breathe from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, they came to life, and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. And I have done it, declares the Lord. Now we turn to the Gospel of John. And we'll see how this prophecy comes true. John 11, one through 45 Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Martha, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, The sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by the world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. After he had said this, oh, excuse me, his disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but the disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us go, that we may die with him. 
On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Martha reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her were also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Jesus, our friend and Savior, we give thanks that you call us to a new life, into new possibilities. May the words we have heard today empower us to rise and follow you always. Amen. Death and life dance with one another throughout today's scripture. From Ikeo, we hear the story of the Valley of the Dry Bones, of Ikeo being asked by God to speak to the breath of new life. The psalmist cries out from the deaths of life, places that cause turmoil, heartache, and loss. But even in the depths, we find the presence of God. Paul reminds us that we are given new life and everlasting life through the Spirit of Christ. And the Gospel brings us the story of the death of Lazarus and the despair of two sisters who lost their brother. We also see Jesus weeping at the tomb of Lazarus, a very human moment. All of these scriptures remind us that life is not without death and pain. But with God and Christ by our side, we can experience new life and you understand him. It has become quite common these days to refer to what we used to call funerals as celebrations of life. However, nothing compares to our upcoming celebration of Easter. Ikeel helps us prepare for this celebration by graphically reminding us that there is indeed life after death. While we won't rejoin this human life like Jesus did, we will join our Lord in the kingdom of heaven. Our Lord has put his spirit in us so that we may live.
the Lord has assured us that we will become more than dry bones on the floor of the valley. We were given this assurance because the people of Israel felt cut off and had lost hope and needed this reassurance, as we do, as we still do to this day. Have you ever heard someone say, I don't know how much more I can take? I've said it, and I imagine that if others, if I have, others have as well. With God in our lives, our lives become better. Church attendance go down, suicide rates go up. Why? These people feel cut off and have lost hope and can't see an alternative. The Lord gives us an alternative, and he very clearly states that whatever hardship we are going through, we will be rewarded in the end. The daily prayer from the New England Conference for Friday the 24th was from the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline Brennan, was entitled Dry Bones, and I'd like to share that with you now. Lord, there are some dry bones I have been praying for over the last few years. You know what I am talking about. The dry bones of racism, the dry bones of political unrest, the dry bones of division in our church, the dry bones of poverty, the dry bones of cancer and COVID, and depression and anxiety. The valley of dry bones keeps getting larger and larger, Lord, but still, I can't give up. While nothing seems to be happening, Lord, I keep thinking about other dry bones that you brought back to life. Could you be calling us to prophesy over these bones, Lord? Could it be that you proclaim to these dry bones that it is time to take on flesh? Lord, breathe your breath upon these dry bones and I will prophesy. Dry bones of racial equity live. Dry bones of political and re religious unity live. Dry bones of abundance life. Dry bones of health live. May it be so. This end, our human end, is actually a new beginning. People that have died and been sent back have come back with some wonderful experiences. I haven't heard of anyone coming back and saying they experienced nothing. My little friend Ella keeps asking me if Jesus is dead. No, he is not dead. His human body may no longer be with us, but his spirit is. His spirit flows through each and every one of us each and every day. This is a gift given to us through the grace of God. This gift gives us the strength and the hope, the hope we need to enjoy our human lives. The beginning of Ikeo starts off like a horror or a disaster movie, but ends with the type of movie I like. A movie with a happy ending. A, ho a Hollywood ending, as they used to call it. Today's movies tend to focus on the negative, and millions of people watch them. Is it a wonder people have become so negative? Let's brighten things up with the light of God. Today's psalm ends in bright light. God himself will redeem Israel from all their sins, from all our sins. This unfailing love is so important to realize. Once you realize that you are loved, your life becomes so much better and happier. And love is contagious. Try smiling at someone. They will smile back instinctively, and they will be happier for it. This is how we spread the social justice that we have been talking about. I'll admit that after all this time, it's a shame that we are still talking about this. But on the other hand, I am glad that we are. I'm glad that you are here. Because we still need to be reminded on a daily basis. I, for one, can attest that it can be easy to get out of the habit of going to church every week. And dare I say, it can be easy to forget about God, especially when things are going wrong. I'm not sure if you recall reading that after the attacks on U.S. soil on 9-11, churches that had been declining in attendance were suddenly full. It took a great tragedy to remind people that they do indeed need God in their lives. Then, unfortunately, as things started to get back to normal and things started going good for people, they once again got out of the habit of going to church, of speaking to God. To me, personally, this is not a good thing. I think it's great that people realize that there is a God and that he will be there for when they need him. But to me, it is important to maintain this relationship. After all, 
The Lord works on his time, not on our human time. And I know this can be frustrating when you are waiting and praying and nothing seems to be happening. I'm here to tell you that something is happening and your prayers are being heard. And God's response will be shown for you when the Lord sees fit. I love Paul's letters, if you have not noticed. I start almost every Sunday by reading from them, and today it was no different. Paul reinforces what we read in Heal, and although our body is dead or will die, our spirit will still be alive. This is given to us through the grace of God. Paul asks us to live a life of the spirit and not of the flesh. I will make the same suggestion. Not because it is a requirement, because I believe you would be happier if you do, and your happiness will lead to the happiness of others, and the trend will continue to all who we touch. Our flesh, our bodies, our emotions are going to let us down. That's just the reality of life. The spirit will not. For those of you struggling that think you are being let down, I repeat that you are not. And I am here, and everyone here this morning and online with us is here for you as well. God will use us or others you may encounter to answer your prayers, and it might even happen without you even knowing it. We are truly blessed in this Christian family of ours. This Christian family is based on the life and teachings of Jesus. In just a few weeks, we will remember when Jesus died on the cross and came back three days later. Today we read about how Jesus mourned for his friend Lazarus and raised him from the dead. He did this with the sole purpose of showing us what a life in Christ can bring. As humans, we are naturally skeptical, and it was important that we realize that Jesus was indeed the Son of God, and that we believe. This belief was the basis for the churches we sit in today. This belief is what gives us the personal and social justification that helps us to create a better world, a world that Jesus would be proud of. And there are indeed parts of the world that are doing a good job. Unfortunately, there are still parts that are not. It seems as if this will be an ongoing challenge for us humans. While the battle of good versus evil may never end, good will always come out on top. I truly believe that. If you think of some of the evil things that have happened over the courses of history, good always seems to come out on top in the end. This is through the grace of God, and to me an important part of making sure good always remains on top. If we were to forget about God, would we begin to accept wrong as right? Who would we turn to in our darkest hour? God gave us his life, and he blessed us with his grace to make the best of it, to make it rewarding, I invite you to keep God with you. Jesus' earthly ministry only lasted a short time, but his spiritual ministry will last forever. Just like I read from Paul's letter every Sunday, we also read about the life and teaching of Jesus, and we will continue to do so. So many things written by man have been outdated and are no longer relevant. The Bible is still as relevant today as it was the day it was written. Let us take the love that Martha, Mary, Lazarus, and Jesus shared to shine the light of love in our lives and in our communities. May it be so. I invite you now to turn to the hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, which is hymn number 133.
gives us steadfast love and abundant mercy. Now, we are invited to bring our gifts to God as tokens of our thanksgiving and praise. <clears throat> this morning's offering will now be taken as we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. For the gifts we bring to you. May these gifts bring new life to those who are in need in our community and in the world. In your beloved name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Brother, sisters, and siblings in Christ, may the love of God, the life of Christ, and the presence of the Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace as we sing the hymn, Go Now in Peace. <coughs> 